when somebody can see something in you before you see it in yourself, you like, what is they looking at? You like, I hear you. You like, thank you. You feel me? I appreciate it, but it make you curious. Like, what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm that I'm I'm overly hard on myself. Or I don't believe in myself at all. But it's like, damn, this person really believe in me. This is Sad Boy Radio. Let's make What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. I'm your host, Matt. And today, we got a special guest in the building. Man, he's a member of Rich Vision. Been making music for 10 years now and recently signed to Def Jam. Go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. Flex Sinatra. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, rapper from the west side of Chicago. Uh, been pursuing this for a minute. Uh, we and we here now. I just definitely just signed to Def Jam about... A couple months ago, we just released the news to the world recently, probably like a week ago before we recorded this, but yeah, freshly signed to Flawless Entertainment and Def Jam. Man, talk about that process a little bit, right? Because coming out of Chicago, it's such a big thing, uh, something that a lot of people don't even know how to navigate something as big as that. Chicago not an easy city to come out of, first of all, you know what I'm saying? It's very, Chicago a cool ass city, bro. A cool, a, a too cool city, cause it's literally a cool city, but it's also like the people here. We kind of just got like a it's Chicago culture to just not be like a we don't we don't really stand too much of shit in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to get acknowledgement and respect here. If you could come out of Chicago, you could probably come out of anywhere for sure. So the process has been um it's been lengthy. It's been a long road. A year long. It's been a long road. <laughs> a lot of ups and downs, but I was able to. Navigate through it just with faith and faith alone. If you ain't got it, if you don't have incredible faith, I'm talking about tremendous faith, like unbendable faith, then you're not gonna make it. Unless you are blessed with some quick success, which I don't even know if quick success is even a blessing, because I wouldn't have no having no other way. So that's how I would describe my experience getting here. It was lengthy and difficult, challenging, but necessary. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it to. You know, if I would have got on in my first year or two of rapping, then you know, I probably would have definitely struggled to keep it. I'm equipped to go the distance now because of my journey. You know what I mean? I mean, just like you've said previously, right? You have to go through those struggles. You have to go through those hurdles to be able to appreciate what you have in the current day. Receiving success early on, it's not ideal for anybody because you get it, but now you're trying to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know how to maintain it because it was just given to you. Had I interviewed certain people in my first year, I what? wouldn't have known what that conversation looked like. Yeah. I wouldn't have known what to do with that. We didn't even start cutting clips until like a year in. Yeah. So once we started doing that, you know, now we we have a better of a understanding of what we need to do. Yeah. When you were talking to Def Jam, what did those conversations look like? Business is business, so... Um, somebody going to win, somebody going to lose in business. That's just the reality. But the goal is to compromise as little as possible. So it was pretty smooth, you know, getting meeting meeting uh, Tunji from Def Jam, the CEO and chairman, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Tunji. That process was, that couldn't have been no easy. You know, I met him. He he liked the music before he met me. Before Flawless brought me to him, he was already sold. But I met him. We hit it off. Everything was smooth. And um, he was ready to go. From the moment that I stepped in the Def Jam building, it, was, it wasn't like, a, oh, we'll see if we could do something. It was like, nah, let's definitely do this mutually. I wanted to be Def Jam. Def Jam wanted to go forward uh, with me. So that was pretty smooth. And the negotiation process was uh, a little bit lengthy. A, a little bit lengthy. I'm going to say the word lengthy a lot through this process, I guess. It took a lot to get in. It took kind of a lot for that deal to get done. That's why my music was down for so long. But um, it was um that was also necessary. The length of that was also necessary just to make sure that you know what I'm saying I was as protected as possible, and they was extremely fair, extremely understanding, and you know we we got it done. If it wasn't gonna happen in a certain type of way, then we weren't gonna be able to do it. So the fact that it happened lets you know that you know both sides are happy. And I definitely want to let you know, like we've had our eye on you. I thought Steve O just put y'all on. I thought y'all didn't know who I was until uh. Until a couple weeks ago. <laughs> nah, I definitely knew who you were. You know, Steve-O had even mentioned you way before, but everything was down. Yeah. So I was like, man. It was hard to gauge. Yeah. I know but... people was literally looking at my my page, my platform or whatever, just the artist page, whether it be social media or just literally like the, the Spotify, whatever you're using, like, did he quit? Like, what is, I know that shit looked crazy. It was just confusing. Like, he's not saying nothing. He haven't made a statement. It's just like, he just kind of disappeared. So I know. I know you was a little unclear. The whole, everybody was. The whole, you and the rest of the city was just a little unclear on what to, you know what I mean? 
on what to what to do. You was probably you was just waiting to see what happened type shit. Kind of, right? You didn't think yeah. I quit though, did you? Nah, I definitely yeah. didn't think some you quit. Some people was literally some people write me long messages, bro, like trying to encourage me and shit. I'm like, the fact that people think I would even consider quitting is crazy, but it did look like that though. I've known about you since Gold Haze, you know, when we did Gold Haze's interview. So you had been in mind. It's just I didn't I couldn't see no music. I couldn't yeah. I couldn't see anything. So I'm like, man, what's going on? You know, but yeah. as soon as it happened, as soon as I saw some music dropping, I knew like you're him, right? Yeah. I, I checked out the projects beforehand. It's like you've been doing it and there's a reason why you've made it to the point you've made it to. Yeah, thanks. So I definitely want to give you your flowers on that. I appreciate it, my guy. Previously you talked about the Nipsey deal. You yeah. know, he had his own deal where he got some money for marketing and that you wouldn't sign a deal unless it was right for you. Absolutely. What made this opportunity the right one for you? Because I was able to retain what I wanted to retain. You got to be realistic in your expectations, right? So if you're not at a certain level, in, in the business where it's this thing, it's a big, when it comes to deals, period, in the business where it's this word called leverage, that means everything. You can want whatever you want out of the deal, but do you have the leverage to get it done? You know what I mean? And I was just... Just able to, just from all the hard work we put in and the position we've able, we've been able to get ourselves in, I was able to just perfectly leverage the situation to not get like, you know, my deal is not a, I wasn't at a Nipsey level type of level in my independent career. You know, they really took it to Great Heights, Mac Miller, Nipsey Hustle, you feel me? People like that, they did crazy shit on their own. I wasn't, I didn't do that much to be able to retain as much as they did, but I did enough to keep what I was comfortable um keeping and giving up what I could, you know what I'm saying, what I could really care less about. So leverage. We was able to actually um, just keep what we wanted to keep, man. That's all. I just had a, I'm not I'm not hard to work with, man. I'm not in a rush to give away my shit, any rights to my shit, more rights than we need to give up. But I'm um, definitely unwilling to give up everything at the same time. So we was able to retain what I wanted to retain. I had a non-negotiable or two. And it was cool with it, man. You know, on both sides, I was I was very um, understanding through the whole process, and so were they. They were they was um, they was very complying with what you know we was asking for, and we was able to get it done. Being knowledgeable enough to understand, like there needs to be a middle ground. As close of a middle ground as y'all can get to. Mm-hmm. You can't have everything, and they can't have everything. Absolutely. And the main issue with a lot of people is they want everything. They want yeah. to be able to. Like you said, keep everything yep. and give up nothing. Yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. That's not because why would the other party ever agree to that? You know what I'm saying? Got to be fair for both sides. It's a, it's a relationship. You know what I mean? Would you, you wouldn't get in a relationship with a, a non-business relationship. You wouldn't, you wouldn't date somebody who you have to, a hundred percent just service them and fuck what I, fuck my wants and needs. I just gotta cater to you. It's in any relationship. It's, you know, it's fifty fifty. It's a scale. It's a balance. Being at this point now. Do you feel like there's a pressure to succeed? I feel like it would be a pressure had I was if I was less prepared. If I stumbled onto massive success in year one, year two, year three, yeah, it's a lot of pressure now because whatever mistakes I'm bound to make because we all make mistakes, the whole world about to see them. We was fortunate to have have had to take the stairs to get here because we were able to make our mistakes under the radar, you get what I'm saying? So the pressure, it would be pressure, but in my specific situation, nah, it's not a, It's not even an ounce of pressure. Man, bro. I heard, I believe it was Kobe who said, I don't feel a, 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 any type of pressure at all when it's time to take that last shot, because I've literally shot this shot a million times. That's why I'm shooting it, so that when that time come, I'm ready, and that's how I feel. This is a shot I've shot countless times. Mm. So yeah, most definitely. If I ain't ready now, I never will be. You know, recently for me, Seeing the success I've had, we've we've had a good amount of success off our reels, and I've started to feel this pressure. I started to feel this anxiety that I need to continue to do well because gaining that success is as easily lost as how you got it, right? You will lose it how you got it, for sure. Even if you're prepared, Even right? If you're prepared, yeah. You could do every single thing right. You could have done everything perfectly, but then you drop one thing that wasn't to everybody's expectations. And sometimes those expectations are only created by yourself. You're the one that puts that on you and you're the one that creates that pressure for yourself. And that's kind of like a mental thing. And something that you had talked about, you know, in a previous interview, you say a lot of people lose their hunger. 
that's why a lot of people end up flopping afterwards. They see that success and then afterwards they don't do anything with it. Do you feel like that mental role can play a part into it? It's all about what you want. It's about the bottom line for you. So if you chasing something, chasing something, chasing something, giving that shit all you got, dedicating your whole life to that shit with the thought of like, man, once I get, if you if you was broken, you like, man, I got to get some money. I have to get some money. I got some talent in this. Let me chase that shit. When I get it, you feel me, Will? You don't even think about what's going to happen when you get it. You just know like you trying to get the money because that's that was your motivation. When you get it, what you think going to happen? If your bottom line was money, then once you get the money, you know what I'm saying, that you feel fulfilled now. So, of course, the talent, the drive is going to decline, and in turn, the motherfucking product is going to decline, and you won't be around next year. It's all about what it's about for you. So, with me personally, just me actually giving a fuck about music, me loving music, me aspiring to be the best. I want to be the best in this shit. I believe I'm the best. I am the best. I have to get on the grand stage and show that now. You can say it all day, but you got to get out here and show and prove. As long as that's my bottom line, I'm not going to run out of hunger because it's going to, you know, it took a long time to get here. It's going to take, it took a lot to get here and it's a long road to go still. You get what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? My hunger going to be fueled for a long time just off of what my bottom line is. I'm here to be the greatest. So what do you feel like it was that made you adopt the bottom line of music is what's most important. I'm not into many things. People be like, what you like? Like, what you like outside of music and shit? That's like my least favorite question to be asked because it make me feel like I'm just a boring person. And I think it helped me realize I am a boring person. I only care about what I care about. I either overly give a fuck or I don't at all. So like, whatever I participate in, I'm on that. A hundred percent. I want to be, I want to take it to the furthest height uh, as it could possibly go. So that's just, that's where I get that from, just me being me. I'm not fun. I wasn't finna join the basketball team, bro, if I'm just kind of decent at basketball. If I'm not, if I don't see no potential in this shit, I'm, I'll do something else. I don't, I'm not here to just to be on the team, traveling into whatever perks might come with it. I'm gonna go to wherever I'm great at and try to be the best I can at that shit, try to take that shit as high as I could possibly take it. So that's just who I am as a person, you know what I'm saying? And I knew that the money would follow. You got to uh, do your passion first and get a little cash after. Like I say on Founding Me, like that's a, that's a fact. The money going to follow. The money going, the money was going, you know, money was going to come. Just get great at something, master something, and everything else should take care of itself. Man, the fact that you mentioned that, right? When mm-hmm. people ask you, what do you like outside of music? Yeah. They asked me that shit the other day. It's a hard, that'd be a hard question for me to answer, bro. They said, what do you what do you like to do outside of your podcast? I'm like... This shit's so much a part of you that, like, yeah, you'd be like, shit, I like chilling other than that shit. I like being with my family and regular boring shit, right? The podcast is two of my main favorite things, right? I majored in psychology and I love music. The whole thing that came from it was the music aspect, right? Interviewing artists and... Relating it back to music. The psychology, uh, that's helping though, for sure. When they ask me, like, what do you like outside of music? It's like, or outside of the podcast, it's like, those are my two favorite things. You get so much fulfillment from this that you don't too much need a whole bunch of other shit to, you know what I'm saying? You can, you could kick back when you're not doing this because, you know what I'm saying? You're happy with this. You know what I'm saying? You're not a slave to it. You love this shit, right? That's how I feel about, <clears throat> about music. I've had that conversation where I'm like, damn, what do people, like regular ass people do, right? Because... They don't do anything creative, so what do they do for fun? What do they enjoy? I couldn't really imagine my life as 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 outside of being a creative. I don't know what the fuck I do. I think I'd be a totally different person. I need this shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit get my life structure and shit. You know what I'm saying? I've had something to chase after. I got shorties, man. I got my my uh, my little homie. Them, you feel me? They into all type of shit that they shouldn't be into sometimes. And I'd be like, just looking at them like, what the fuck did y'all be doing, bro? But most of them, you feel me, just don't have anything to chase after. You get what I'm saying? You need something to put your focus on out here. You feel me? Or you, or you gonna drift. So if I ain't have music, I'd be drifting around this bitch like everybody else. That's why I don't judge. So I'm probably the most understanding nigga because I can, you know what I'm saying? I, I always ask why. Instead of just saying, just putting my two cents in, I, I, I try to get to the bottom of it before I even say anything. And people need something to go after, bro. So most definitely. My life as an artist, music saved me for sure. Being able to participate in this shit, being able to even have a, just having a gift in this shit, period, is just, that shit just a blessing, bro. You get to be an artist and you got, you you was born with something that you could chase after. And it's actually attainable. It's not a pipe dream or uh, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It give you structure outside of school, outside of work. You know what I'm saying? It give you something else, like a, a higher uh, purpose type shit, you know? 
I think people need that. I needed it for sure. That shit saved my life. Where do you feel like that need to ask why stem from? I don't think anybody doing nothing for no reason. You might be doing something for no reason. Like the, the act itself might have been senseless, but if you dig deep, something got you in the space to do that. You know what I'm saying? Everything come from something, bro. I don't just I just don't believe that shit is happening for no reason and people are certain ways for no reason. So I'm just curious. You know what I'm saying? These I, I watch people make wild ass decisions. Like, why the fuck is you doing it? What the fuck is wrong with you for real? I I wouldn't ask them what's wrong with you because you know what I'm saying? That'll make them feel like they probably don't feel the best about themselves already. So I wouldn't want to attack that or or try to tear them down or nothing. But I'm I'm legitimately for my for my own curiosity and to for your sake, I'm like, why? I'm just I just want to know. That's all. At the end of the day, you want to understand why somebody is the way they are, especially when they're close to you. I had a conversation recently with somebody where you know, their actions often are reflective of what they have been through in their life. Their traumatic relationships with people and with whoever may have raised them. And you want to understand them and you want to give them leeway for those situations. But it's like, at a certain point, it turns into disrespect. So you have to weigh it out, right? You have to understand, like, I understand you. I love you. I want to give you as much you know, as I can. But at the same time... You have to understand where you're coming from and work to fix yourself rather than just attack all the time. You've talked about having to relearn yourself as well, mm -hmm. creating a new version of yourself and becoming a better version of who you are today. Def Jam has done that for you. It's forced you to grow and it's forced you to, you know, reevaluate certain things about yourself. What are some things that come to mind when it came to this Def Jam and having to relearn who you are? What I learned by... Um attaining a certain level of success, you get thrusted into this position where you realize it clicked. Whether you see it coming or not, you're going to realize like, oh, I'm not who I was no more. Like, as a person, yeah, I'm, I'm the same person I am, but I'm not like, I'm not viewed the same. You're not going to be treated the same by people. Perception is reality. So just, you know, things change a little bit and it puts you in a position where you realize like, oh, I got a, my newfound position it's going to require a new version of me. The main thing that I realize is like the more successful I'm starting to become, my life is intensifying. And what, what I mean by that is um, shit that was just regular shit at a point is now everything is a little, I just have to be calculated about everything. It's, nothing can be for no reason no more. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it just puts you in a space where your decision making got to be sharp and you have to be sharp in every aspect of your life. I thought, you know, the the 18 year old me would have thought like, shit, all I got to do is keep rapping. You know what I'm saying? Watch my surroundings. I'd be cool, but it ain't really that simple. As you start to attain success, you're going to have to tighten up in literally every aspect of your life or the music won't go right. The, the studio, the art, the... The, the grind, the work ethic, everything that you need to produce a song, that shit, that shit is not just contingent upon what beat I'm finna hear and what I could think of. You gotta get to the motherfucking studio. You know what I'm saying? You have to, the decisions that you make today gonna affect how you perform in the studio the next day. You know what I'm saying? And the music you're making, the the experiences you go through, you know, that's what you're talking about. You know, specifically you, that's what you're talking about. Everything you talk about is real. Yeah, most definitely. So when you're not living with intention, when you're not doing the right things like you're talking about, now you're you're not giving yourself the ability to create something good and true to who you are at the end of the day. Yeah. I think it should all work hand to hand. I think you should uh you should you should give your give everything you got to your to your craft and you should do all of the other things outside of your craft that's gonna allow you to to be everything you need to be within it. You get what I'm saying? When you're given a gift, you got to be a good steward of it. Because it's a gift. You didn't work to, you know, you you can you can sharpen it. You know what I'm saying? You can uh, refine it and everything, master it. But you're not, I'm not good at rapping because I worked on this. I was literally given, I was given what, I was given a, a, a skill, a skill set. You know what I'm saying? I built upon it for sure. But God gave me this and I have to protect it. And just, you know, that's kind of what I was saying about, uh, to tie into what I was saying about having to become a new version of yourself and all of that, it's just, it all worked hand in hand is what I'm trying to say. I wish it was only music and I could just leave this studio and just do whatever I want, but nah, you gotta, 
you got to step up to the plate and be who you was trying to become. Mm-hmm. Do all the other things too, you know what I'm saying? To whom much is given, much is required. So That shit hit for sure. <laughs> Here's the truth. Def Jam's not the only thing that shaped you in this lifetime. Throughout your life, you've been through experiences that have forced you to relearn who you are. Right now, you're at this point in your career where you are relearning who you are at this age. I don't know how old you are, so I'm not even going to attempt at that. But I want to take it back to the beginning. Let's take it back to the Plex, right? It's a place that when people ask you where you're from, you always say, do you consider where you're from by the place that you have the fondest memories or the place that you were born? Yeah, I think people got different definitions of like where you're from, you know what I'm saying? If you was born in if you was born in LA, but you moved at a young age to motherfucking Memphis, like, and that's where you grew up, which one is like which one is which? What do you consider? I mean, I, I was born in, I was born here and I grew up in the same area. So yeah, to so me, you, like you incorporated it, it all matter, right? It all the same thing. But honestly, like the place that you grew up, right? The place that shaped you into the person you are. Exactly. And for you, you talk about the plex. So how did it shape you into the person we see today? For those who don't know, the plex is a, a apartment complex in, in Willowbrook. Uh we refer to we just call that motherfucker the plex. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, niggas shorten everything down. We don't say the whole Nothing really. We always abbreviating some shit, but it's a affluent area. You know what I'm saying? It's a very white suburban, rich area, right? In a broad scheme of things, but then it's this little, it's this little small complex, little dot in the middle of that motherfucker. That's the that's the plex where you got you know what I'm saying low income housing and shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who got uh, what you call it, like uh, yeah, Section Eight and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's it's Predominantly black, you know what I'm saying? It's just very unlike the rest of the, the the suburb that it's in. Very much a suburb, but not the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air type suburb that you think of when you hear the word suburb, you know what I'm saying? We amongst it. We right in it, but we got our own community within the community. You get what I'm saying? So that's what the uh, Plex is, just for reference, for uh, for people who might not know. But then the question was, how did it shape me? How did it shape you into the person we see today? I think it gave me versatility. Um you see every type of person in the plex. You know what I'm saying? You see people who got pride in where they from so much that they won't even... people. A lot of people come from Chicago to the plex like I did. I'm born on the west side of Chicago, and I moved to that motherfucker at a pretty early when I was in like fifth grade. And you see people who who just... They know they grew up in that motherfucker like me, but they won't say it. Like You know what I'm saying? That shit taught me that um, it's just a lot of different type of people in the world, man. And, they grew up in it like me, but they they hold on to the fact that they from Chicago. The Plex taught me that stepping outside of Chicago taught me that people really identify, get a lot of their identi- uh, identity from where they from. You get what I'm saying? Because all you would, all I would meet growing up is motherfuckers who I've been knowing. I've known your ass for eight, nine, ten years. We've grown up in this motherfucker together, but you claim this specific place in Chicago that's very near and dear to your heart. I'm pretty, I thought you was from here, but you know. They just gonna claim Chicago all day, you feel me? Whatever type of person that it is in the world, I probably met them in a plex. Your neighbors, all your neighbors look just like you, you know what I'm saying? We all, it's predominantly black, like I, uh, like I earlier stated, but you go to school and, you know what I'm saying, we it, we are, we are um, I would say middle to lower class, you know what I'm saying, community going to school with super rich white kids. Some of them, they're they not so fortunate themselves, but a lot of them, they, they rich white kids. So it's just, I got, I kind of got to have like the, best of both worlds type of experience, you know what I'm saying? I got to grow up with my people, but view another type of people in the way they live too. And it teach you how to be able to walk in any room and not be intimidated or feel too divided from what you're seeing, you know what I'm saying? No matter no matter the, the race or the type of person that you're meeting, I'm damn near familiar with whatever and I'm comfortable. Man, I'll, you answered my next question too, because I was going to tell you, how did that versatility help you moving forward? I think a lot of why I'm a good people person is just because I've met a whole bunch of people. And there's no way to really, it's, it's uh, you, you was a psychology major, you said, right? Mm-hmm. So you probably get to understand like the way that people think and all of that. I don't know. I can't really get into, I can't figure out how people think and why they do shit so much as easy as you probably could. But I do realize just in a general sense that just people just different. For whatever the reason may be, bro, people are the way they are for some reason. And I was able to just, you know what I'm saying, get a lot of experience and become more of a people person just by, you know what I'm saying, being exposed to so many different type of people. 
Mm. That's the best part of where I'm from, for sure. As far as people, right? Understanding why they are the way they are, I I always take it back to their parents. Yeah, most definitely. The lessons that they instilled in you, those are the things that you're going to carry for a lifetime. When your parent tells you that, you know, you're the greatest, you're going to be able to be the best rapper ever. If they instill that confidence into you, who the fuck else can tell you you're bad? That's the most important shit that happened to me in my life, I believe. You know imposter syndrome, when people be like, people garner a certain uh, success and they kind of find themselves in this state of like questioning, like, damn. Why the fuck do you like me? Why me? You know what I'm saying? It's the craziest question to ask, but that's something that people go through. I think people like that, and it's just, the, you know, this is just my... Uh, how I assess it could be wrong, but I think people like that maybe didn't get a whole bunch of words of affirmation and and uh and a lot of like uh nurturing, you know what I'm saying, positive uh 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 seeding into them. You get know what I'm saying? As a kid, my granny made sure I, I was confused oftentimes why my granny like believed in me so much. I'm like, I didn't even see what she saying at the time, but as I as I got older, the words that she would tell me, as I started to have success, I would refer back to like, oh yeah, my my granny been telling me this. I get, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to see it now. So most definitely, I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Why do you feel like it confused you so much? When somebody can see something in you before you see it in yourself, you like, what is they looking at? You like, I hear you. You like, thank you. You feel me? I appreciate it, but it make you curious. Like, what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm. That, I'm, I'm overly hard on myself. I don't believe in myself at all. But it's like, damn, this person really believe in me, like for real. And I'm just, you be at a point, they be at a point where they can see it clearly and maybe you just not there yet. It take time to get there sometimes. So the confusion come from just not being caught up yet. But eventually I definitely got to the point where I'm like, oh, okay. All of my confidence absolutely 100% come from, you know what I'm saying, the words that my, that my, the, the life that my granny used to speak in me and my mama used to speak in me when I was little. Whatever little shit I did, she made the biggest deal out of that shit. She was like, you know, she just made me feel good about whatever. And she just would look me in my eye and tell me, like, you somebody. You're going to be somebody. You're going to be something. Out of it. I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But later, I was like, oh, I can do that. I was told this from a young age. Like, I get, I get what she's seeing, seeing now. So, shout out my granny, man. R.I.P. my granny. Now, looking back. What is it she saw that you didn't see in yourself? To get to a certain certain places in life, certain rooms, certain levels, you got to be a certain type of person. God have to, and it's not because of you, you feel me? God always the source, period. God gives certain people certain things. You know what I'm saying? In the entertainment industry, they call it like it factor. Can't be taught. You just got to have it. And I got a certain poise and I got certain, you know what I'm saying, characteristics that I couldn't have sharpened or worked on myself, giving myself at all, they simply come from, you know what I'm saying, it's a gift. She was able to see whatever the, the it thing was. Life is hard, bro. Whatever you need to get to great heights in life, you're going to need the help of God and you're going to need these little intangibles that he's going to that he gonna uh, equip you with for the ride to get there. And, you know, just like I was saying on the, on the last question you asked, I wasn't quite able to see it yet. She was. Sometimes people could just see shit in you that they can't, that, that you can't yourself yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's funny because my granny used to do it for me. Now I do it to my to my little homie. You know, you know they they um don't make the best decisions all the time. None of us make all of the right decisions, but some wilder than others. And I be trying to tell them like, bro, do this. Don't don't do that. You have like you know you talented, right? Like you know you somebody. Like you don't have to, these niggas is goofies, bro. You don't have to, you don't have to live like you lost. They don't have nothing to chase after. They don't, they it's, clearly they're not trying to attain nothing. They're not trying to be nothing for whatever reason. Not judging them, but we don't know what that's about. You, little bro, you something. Do the right thing so that you can get there. You know what I'm saying? Protect that. Because everybody don't have it. So you need to, you know, you have a gift like I got a gift. Be a good steward of it. Be responsible with it. You can get somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny how that came uh, full circle. And when you watch people that, you know, you want to believe in, you see you see the potential in them. When you see them throw it away, it almost hurts you. It's one of the worst things to watch. Wasted potential is, man, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing worse than wasted potential. Somebody, something that could have been something, but just kind of, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't go about it correctly. They didn't, they just fumbled it or... They didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody saw it except for them. 
or they just kind of got overwhelmed by the moment or whatever. There's many reasons that potential don't pan out sometimes, but whatever the reason, man, wasted potential is one of the... I can't name too many things worse than waste of potential, bro. It's hard to watch. It, it, it's it's fucked up. That's why when I see potential, you know what I'm saying, it's my it's my I'm obligated to say something and try to nurture and feed that because if I if I understand that this is a hard thing to watch, I'm gonna do everything I can to keep you from going, you know what I'm saying, going left. If if a little if a few words could help you, if I could try, I'm not guaranteed to be able to get through in my message and actually be a good help, but Got to try. I absolutely have to try. It's mandatory. It's not something I could watch and just say, I hope he pan out. No, I'm going to try to help you pan out. You show it in your music, bro. Throughout the whole separation album. Yeah. You're preaching positive messages. You're preaching to people. You don't You don't need to do this shit. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. I want to continue talking about the Plex real quick. Yeah, I never get to talk about the Plex, man. I never get to speak about it. It's kind of funny, you know, this This is my first time speaking about the Plex, and I'm trying to, it's just such a, a second nature, it's just, it's home to me, so it's kind of, it's, it's kind of hard to actually put a lot of shit in perspective, in words about it, because that's just the world, we, you know what I'm saying, that's the world I grew up in, so it's kind of, pardon me if I'm struggling to come up with the Plex, you know what I'm saying, answers, because that shit just, you know what I'm saying, that shit just life for us, so you know. But I'm interested though, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? I like I I want to talk about it for sure. What's a moment there that stuck with you, both good and bad? You have people who grow up rapping and shit like that. They kind of know like this is what I want to do. My brother P, you know what I'm saying? Plug, his ass was a rapper since his ass probably came out the womb rapping, to be honest. Before this shit was real, like like a fad. Everybody rap now, but P was rapping when when we was super young and nobody was into it for real yet. It was rappers. It's always been rappers, but everybody and their mama wasn't rapping yet. People that you, you didn't know 10 rappers. Now you know 10 rappers. Uh, that was him. That wasn't me. But we was best friends, so you know what I'm saying? That's my brother, so I'm with him all the time, and I never wrote a rap in my life. It's funny, because if you know me rapping, it's, it's kind of funny that I could even, that this is even what my path ended up being, because I didn't see this shit when I was a kid. So I got into it with bro, you know what I'm saying? Just being in the basement with him at his mama crib, and we were shorties. His ass writing songs and shit. I can't tell you exactly how it happened, but he writing music. I ended up writing a verse, too. Completely experimental, though. You know what I'm saying? Zero confidence. I don't know how this shit going to work. I might, we might put this song out and might get my ass laughed at his school, you know what I'm saying, the next day. We going to see how this shit go. Put our first song out at some point, went to school, and I knew after, by the time that day was over, I'm like, oh, I'm finna do this shit. We got to, we got to overwhelm in response, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was fucking with it. And I was just, I don't know if I was more surprised or just like excited that I got something to do other than, you know what I'm saying, sports and shit now. But that's a day I'll never forget, just very nervously putting my first, you know what I'm saying, putting me out there doing music, coming completely out the blue doing music, you feel me, at the, at the end of my senior year. And getting that overwhelming response because had it not been a good response, I'm not sitting in this chair right now. You know what I'm saying? I would have been like, I don't know if I would have been able to get through that beginning stage of like trying to build some confidence. I might have been like, fuck that shit. I don't think that's me. And I would have did something else. So that's a memory I'll never forget for sure. The plex and going to school over there and shit. And you know what I'm saying? Letting everybody know for the first time, like, hey, I'm fucking with the music now. And everybody like, from jump, they like, you hard. If you were... Given words of affirmation early on in your life, why do you feel like your confidence was so low that it could have been shattered with just like one negative comment? My grandma wasn't necessarily telling me, hey, you're going to be the biggest movie star in the world, or the, or are you going to the NFL, or you're going to be this. She wasn't specific in what I was going to be great at. She was telling me I'm great, period. Like as a person, you are somebody. So me putting myself out there in certain fields... You know, just because I'm very, I'm very aware that I'm that I'm something, I'm gonna be something in this world. But that don't mean when I try this music thing, that's the thing for me. You get what I'm saying? So as I, you know, what I'm saying, stuck my my fucking neck out there with that and gave that an attempt. You know, what I'm saying I could have very well been like I could have I could have fell flat on my face and that shit would have been over. So I didn't I didn't know what I was. I know I was gonna be great. I know that I'm somebody in this world, but I don't know what I'm gonna really. I don't know in which vessel I'm going to be able to manifest this in. What is the feel? Like, what am I doing? How am I going to impact? Didn't know it was music, and I found out. So my confidence was low because, like, is this it? Might be it, might not be. And that uncertainty, you feel me, just kind of, you know, it affected my, it, uh, my confidence was contingent upon the response. I mean, just like we said, right, 
you never know where life's gonna take you. Yeah, that shit wouldn't have made me feel like less of a man in general. I just would have known that like music, I don't want to fail at nothing. So if I would have failed that shit, I would have been salty. That's the thing. But I still would have been, you know, them words of affirmation still would have held me up to know that all right, it ain't that music shit, but it's gonna be something. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still me. So then what's a bad moment that sticks out to you from the plugs? I don't know. Cause it's my childhood, you know what I'm saying? I don't really have like one moment that stick out in my mind that was like a super embarrassing day or a day that some fucked up shit happened. I, when I think of the Plex, man, I think of the the best time of my life. You know what I'm saying? Especially now, now that I'm elevating to another level in life, I'm always had a Plex to reflect on, reflect on, and just remember. Like, damn, we was just shorties who ain't no shit at the time, and it was it was it was no pressure. It was no, you know, no. Uh, it wasn't this full plate of responsibilities that I got now. It was just, we was just kids and we was free. We was just, you know what I'm saying? Having fun on a day-to-day basis, not giving a fuck about tomorrow for real. <laughs> not a bill in sight, no rent, none of that shit. So when I think of the Plex, you know what I'm saying? I just think of being a just think of being a kid. No, no, I'm sure maybe if I think a little harder, I could think of it, but fuck a bad memory in the Plex. I got all good memories in the Plex to, off the top of my head right now. It's basically what a neighborhood would have been to you. Absolutely. Most definitely. That's where I got my name, man. That's when why I, I met everybody who I consider a brother, family. I met them all in the same place. Met mm-hmm. them all in the same hallways at them schools. Sat with their ass in the same hallways, you know what I'm saying? And in the buildings and shit, just... You know, remember when you used to be a kid and you could just spend a day doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely nothing. We just sitting... We sitting in McDonald's and shit from sun up to sundown, just you know just what I'm chilly. saying. Just being kids, bro. So that's just that's what the Plex are always gonna be for me, bro. Just the the genesis of 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 what y'all are looking at right now. So then, after leaving the Plex, what's something that you had to reshape in your mentality or relearn about yourself? I had to just become more aware of not only my surroundings but just how the rest of the how the rest of the city and everything else operate. You know what I'm saying? When I stayed in the Plex, it was kind of like a bubble. When I left that motherfucker, it was like, uh, and well, when we was when when I was coming up in the Plex, when we was outside, we was still, you know what I'm saying? We still went outside of that motherfucker. I don't want to call it a bubble, like we never left or nothing. But moving outside of it is definitely different, though. I feel, I feel, um, I feel unfamiliar with a lot of the places I'm in, a lot of these neighborhoods and shit now because I'm not. It's just not as it don't got that home feeling like the place that I'm actually from. You know what I'm saying? The place that I was actually raised in and shit. So just spending more time in Chicago, bro, you just learn to be alert. You got to be alert. You got to be super alert to be aware, to be alive, for real, and especially in Chicago, for sure. So I'm just, the biggest uh, adjustment I had to make is just being on point. You know what I'm saying? Where we going? Do we have to be there? Do we need to be there? Or we just doing some shit? Don't do shit for no reason. Make sure you have to be there, and you know what I'm saying? Get in, get out. Be smart. Mm-hmm. Be intentional more than anything. And being intentional is what you are with your music, right? Absolutely. Once again, going back to the separation project, you mm-hmm. preach about you know, being a positive role model and you know, being aware of it. In Christian Dior, you say you got influence over folks. What you're doing with it. For sure. What did it take for you to get to the point to understand, like, I am important to people and I can help influence this next generation or anybody around me. You know, outside of music, I'm a positive influence to the to the shorties around me in general. For whoever may be around me doing shit that, you know, I can't get into detail, but anybody doing anything that they're not supposed to be doing, this is shit that they call each other about. It. I just did this or I did that. Literally, you know what I'm saying? They, they brag about this shit. They think this shit cool. They don't call me with that shit because they know. You know what I'm saying? They know I don't want to hear that shit. I'm not gonna have nothing good to say about it. You finna get a, you finna get a, uh, you finna get told the right thing and not what you want. I'm not finna laugh with you about this shit because now I'm enabling you. So that's who I am outside of music. So in my music, I try to just stay as close to who I am as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's why my journey wasn't quick because I never was like, damn, what is they doing? What's the rap climate? What is niggas doing to get on? Let me do that. No, I'm 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 gonna be me through this whole process. You get what I'm saying? So that's just who I am. That's just me. I'm a positive influence in real life. So in my music, why would I why would I send you off in a song and then try to get you on the phone and tell you the right thing? You would be confused, right? You'll be like, bro, I was just listening to your shit. You just ain't you the same nigga who just said such and such. You know what I'm saying? Your words are, my words will come back to bite me anyway. So I'm just being me. That's just who I am. And I even think about uh another interview that you did. Where, you know, you tell them, like, you know, I, I'm versatile with the music I can make. Mm-hmm. I can make some turn-up shit or I can make some conscious shit. Yeah, whatever you want. 
as long as I'm not talking about loading up guns and sliding on people, <laughs> because that's not me. For sure. Most definitely. These niggas feel like I have... Y'all niggas is not like that. Most of y'all are not like that. Most of the music you hear that's... That's um that's misleading your your shorty and your your kids or whatever the the youth out here that shit not even some shit they actually doing so why the fuck would I partake in that you get what I'm saying if it, I, I always said if that's what you're doing and you just living through your art you know what I'm saying you speaking through your art what you doing then for sure but I've never been a I understand that but I just never been a person who said what do I need to do you feel me to 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 fit and to get on I always knew I was gonna get here so. Why not do it my way? Why was that so important to stick to? So that I could just keep my integrity and be able to sleep with myself at night. These niggas put their integrity in their pocket too quick, if they have any. You know what I'm saying? Don't buy, Everybody just want to be motherfucking. Niggas just want to be lit, bro. That's all niggas care about. Niggas want a couple dollars. Niggas want some attention. Niggas want a blue check and everything that come with the life. You know what I'm saying? The life was going to come with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I fully understood since a young age that I was going to get to where I'm going. So it's no need. It just was never a need to participate in anything that I didn't want to participate in. I'm going to get there, so do it your way. You know what I'm saying? Be 100. I'm 100 gang. That's not some shit, you know what I'm saying? That's not some shit that we just throw around. You know what I'm saying? We don't say we 100 just because it sounds cool. Being 100 man, doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? The stand-up thing. And that's the best thing you can do. Be true to yourself. Remaining true to yourself is only going to take you, it's going to take you a lot farther than being somebody that you're not, right? Look at 6 9 He reached the top. You want to be a character out here? And fell wanna, off. For sure. Whatever happened would do, you know, whatever. You know, but that happened to a lot of people. It might have not happened in as dramatic fashion as that, but a lot of people get, they gain the success or don't gain it. You feel me? They, 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 spend, they spend energy putting on, uh, putting on this, costume and character that they think they need to do because this is how I'm going to get heard. And now what have you done? You know what I'm saying? You might get to where you going, but at what cost? You know what I'm saying? You willing to become a, a shell of yourself to get to where you going? You know what I'm saying? You literally, you literally acting. You being another person to, to, to gain success in the, in the, in the motherfucking entertainment industry. This shit wasn't that serious to me. I was going to be all right. I'm not... Doing no goofy ass shit to get anywhere. I was going to get to the top or I wouldn't. Shay, I mean, you've even mentioned that you'd rather not be famous. You'd rather just be a writer and be in the background and make money. I used to feel like that, but I don't feel like that no more. What changed? I didn't know if I was ready for all of the things that um, come with the motherfucking camera being on you. If you know me in real life, you know I'm real reserved. I'm cool. I don't do too much talking. Um... I'm not the most outgoing nigga in the world. I'm not going to be the nigga. I'm not the nigga in the middle of the club, you feel me? Everybody cheering around, he dancing. I'm the nigga, you feel me? I'm I'm sitting down, cool. I'm in the section, minding my business. I don't really want to talk for real. I am have a ball and I'm going to leave. So that's just who I am as a person, you feel me? And I thought that all of the lights and cameras would kind of conflict with who I am at heart, just me being real reserved. But then I realized, like, you could still be that, just... Do it in your own way. You can still be the 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 reserved and you know what I'm saying introverted and calm person that you are without uh I mean and and have the you know what I'm saying the the lights on you too you know what I'm saying they gonna tune they tuned into you you don't have to be a motherfucking you don't gotta be the most I'm I'm a fan of people who you know what I'm saying they don't give us the most you know what I'm saying personality and shit they they be cool how they be cool and you fuck with them for them so that's what changed I realized that being me was gonna can work so do you feel like you were afraid that you would end up changing? I thought all of the, the glamour, you know what I'm saying, the lights and the cameras and shit, I thought that shit required you to be a certain type of person. So I thought I was going to have to, like, I was never willing to change and be something else, but I thought, like... You had to be. Damn, I'm kind of going to have to, like, you know what I'm saying, maybe it's just something that I need to get in, like, you know what I'm saying, slowly, like, learn and get into. Maybe I'll develop to that point. You feel me? I thought it was. I thought that shit was required. One of the best shit... One of the best things that ever happened to me is realize, like, I don't got to do shit. I'm me. Your brand is literally you. It's only one you. Be you and sell that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people going to relate to who you are. So you don't need to look at any example you ever seen and try to really model after it. Mm -hmm. Because you the first you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look at what people do. Admire it. Learn from people. Learn what to do, what not to do. But you don't ever have to veer away from 
who you are. Because now you just threw away your, you know what I'm saying? You threw away your golden ticket. You had, there's only one of you, and you you trying to be this nigga. We never going, you know what I'm saying? You never going, you never going to get to actually profit off of being who you are now. You feel me? You, you, you ruined it. You threw it away. I like conscious flex. Yeah, most definitely. I do I do too. That's why separation sound the way it sound. I got to just clear my thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Got to speak my mind for, you know what I'm saying, through 14 songs. Saying shit that I should be saying. And even on, you know, Valuable, off the album, you say you got to give yourself forgiveness. You can't right every wrong. What were some of the things that you had to forgive yourself for? Being too hard on myself. I had to forgive myself for, uh, for it's all done in good spirit because I just be giving this shit all I got. But I remember when I used to, when I was very early in my career, I go to the studio, I book some time, I go to the studio, you feel me? And uh, it just be one of them nights where I'm not really coming up with shit. So I leave the studio empty handed. And that shit would devastate me, shorty. I used to be like, it wasn't like, all right, one third of the night. It would be like, I used to question myself, like, nigga, what the fuck you mean? You trying to be a rapper and you can't make a song at the drop of a dime. I felt like that's how it was supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? It would be equivalent to like, a basketball player thinking he's supposed to drop 40 every game, drop 20, at least 25 every game. It's not going to happen. It's not possible. So I had to forgive myself for being too hard on myself in the beginning. And I got in a much more comfortable space and a much more, I became, I probably became unstoppable when I realized, like, relax. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, chill. Like, be have some grace with yourself. For sure. It's normal. You know what I'm saying? It's completely normal to not... You ain't gonna perform at a at a LeBron type level every night, bro. So I had to forgive myself early for being just too tough of a critic. It made me the, the brap I am today for sure. So I don't regret it, but I did have to get away from that. So when you say you can't right every wrong, what's done is done. Some shit you can correct, some shit you can't. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty black and white, straight and simple. Uh I think everybody should make it their business to correct whatever they can correct, but some shit, bro, just, you know, some shit you just got to give yourself, got to have some grace uh, with yourself with it for yourself in the situation. And if it's somebody else, you know what I'm saying, you got to give them grace as well, and it's just you got to let it be what it is. But absolutely fix whatever you can, though. But everything is not fixable. And that, that'd be the shit that hurt, but it's life. What's one of those things that you weren't able to fix? Probably past relationships because you did what you did and you said what you said already, bro. Now, we could mend this relationship. I could apologize a thousand times. I could do apologetic gestures and everything. I could do everything in my power to try to rectify it. But something I might have said, you feel me? Something I did say made you feel a certain way and we can't really. Sometimes it just really ain't no taking that back. You know what I'm saying? So I I would say that for sure. Sometimes things are broken beyond repair. Absolutely. And it definitely hurts to see that. It hurts to know that you're the reason and you're the cause of that. And the last thing I want to touch on is, man, I don't even know if you want to talk about it, but Vent, that's a song that really your whole life could have looked a lot different. Super. Talking about, you know, at 21, I'm about to have my own seed. Mm. You know, I'm when I see my baby smile, I'm going to have no happiness for real. Mm-hmm. Talk about where that situation placed you mentally. More than anything, that situation, man. It didn't pan out the way that I thought it was going to pan out. But it taught me, before I speak on that, I can tell you that that uh, that uh shit taught me that I'm like a legit artist for real. You know what I'm saying? I believe that was the first time that I called Hedge like, hey, I got something to say, you feel me? I need a beat that's like this kind of beat. Give me something open that I could literally, you know what I'm saying, no pun intended, vent on. And... Uh, you learn, so you go through these stages as an artist where you actually be like, you shock yourself sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You put up that 40 point game, you be like, damn. You start to buy into who you are, you know what I'm saying? The potential that you actually have. And that song taught me that I'm a legitimate artist. Uh, as far as, uh, how did you word the question again? Where did that place you mentally, that situation? It placed me in a position of disappointment. I was shocked and I was a little, you know what I'm saying? Caught off guard by the whole situation, but after the initial shock of it, I became excited. And I think you can hear a little bit of it. Well, not a little bit of that. The, the line you just said, that's excitement right there. I was looking forward to that. It didn't pan out, but um, that shit placed me in a place of, you know what I'm saying, just being more cautious, you know what I'm saying, about the people I, I say involve myself with, you know what I'm saying, going forward, most definitely. It put me in a few different, that shit put me on a whole motherfucking roller coaster of different 
thought processes and emotions. So a lot. That shit put me in a lot of different places. Well, I mentioned that situation because, you know, there's the good and the bad to it, right. obviously. You know, because in Ven 2, then you go on to explain, like, you know, the baby's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And for most people at 21 years old, you're thinking, like, damn, I just won. Yeah. I, I, I'm out. I don't yeah. got to deal with this shit. Yeah. But there's also that factor that, damn, like, I really was supposed to have something of my own. Yeah, yeah. Do you still look back on it as, like, a little bit disappointed? <laughs> no, nah, because if that was something that I needed, if that was a situation that was going to somehow sharpen me and make me better and uh, something that I could gain from, Something that God wanted me to experience so that it could shape me in a certain way, then it would have happened. It didn't, so that means it wasn't necessary. And I, I'm able to chalk it up pretty easily like that. I believe everything happened for a reason and things that don't happen also, you know what I'm saying? They don't happen for a reason. You might be super excited about some shit. Apply for your dream house, your dream apartment or some shit. If you don't get it, even if you don't understand the reason why, it's probably a reason why you shouldn't have been there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm able to chalk shit up pretty easily. I don't look back and be disappointed about too much or nothing because what's for me, I'm a half. So what did you learn about yourself from that situation? What version of you did you find afterwards? I don't know. I kind of just, you know, mostly mostly I was salty about the shit. So I don't know if that shit, I don't know how much that shit changed me into a different person. I don't think I learned, I don't, I don't know how much I learned other than the fact that, you know what I'm saying? I think that shit helped me as an artist more than anything. Just, I think I needed, maybe in that moment, at that chapter of my life, I needed uh, something, a real deal, like some a pretty like serious life topic to see if I could maybe translate this in my Can I channel this music? So outside of music, it's hard for me to uh, pinpoint, you know what I'm saying, how that shit might have shaped me as a person, to be honest. Being an artist is so much of who I am that I kind of relate everything that I go through to, I see how it can fuel that, and you know what I'm saying, and how it helped me in that way. So that's just... That's just the mindset I live my life in. I'm an artist in every sense, every day, every second of my life, I'm an artist. You know, so I'm thinking like an artist, breathing like an artist. So I'm that's kind of normal for me. Well, especially because you were already an artist at that point in time, right? That's the, like you said. That's the thank, mindset. Thank you're God, living I was. In. I'm glad I was. You know, what I'm saying I needed that. I, I literally needed that for sure. But that's the mindset you're living in because look how easy it was when we went back on old shit, right? Like the plex, learning. Learning who you are and when you left, right? Finding that new version of who you are. Finding that new version of who you are when it comes to being a role model for people. All this shit happened. I'm sure music was in there, but it wasn't your whole life like it is now. And even when that situation might have happened. So the fact that you have music and the fact that, you know, it's your purpose. That's the best thing that most people can ask for. Most definitely. Because a lot of people don't even have a purpose in this world. Most definitely. And when you don't have that purpose, it's like, damn, where yeah. do I go? Yeah. <clears throat> to be able to be an artist, everybody just think about life with literally like if music wasn't a thing, shit, you can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we all love it, but to be able to participate in it, to be able to be an artist, you know what I'm saying? To have a gift in it and be able to make art, that shit is a... Uh, that shit is super, super privileged. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that I've just, I don't, I don't too much pat myself on the back. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the reason for it all. You know what I'm saying? God really gave me the ability to be an artist. You know what I'm saying? He gave me the privilege of being an artist, and I don't take that shit lightly. I'm super grateful for it, bro. To be able to be an artist is one of the, probably one of the greatest honors, you know what I'm saying, in life, period. You know what I'm saying? How many people wish they could make music, but... It just really ain't in them, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gifted to be, I mean, I'm uh, I'm blessed to be a part, for sure. I mean, even in not too long ago, you say, God, why you put that on me? How you know I could manage? My life was putting a beating on me. I ain't, I ain't even, even get, get damaged. Because you don't know what you could get through until you go through it, you know what I'm saying? You would, you would think of some shit in a certain type of way. You would, If somebody told you what you was about to go through, you would be like, man, hell no. But you would be surprised by the way that you uh, handled it. And you would realize at the end of it that it wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? God God going to sustain you while you're going through what you go through. So I say, I say, God, God, uh, what I say? Uh, uh, God, why you put that on me? Yeah, how you know I can manage? You know what I'm saying? That's just That just speaks to how we think versus what God knows. You know what I'm saying? You will, you will be surprised by your own strength. What was going on at that time? It wasn't nothing specific. That was just me speaking to, I overcome whatever I go through. You know what I'm saying? You can't really name a situation that you that you never 
that you didn't get through. You know what I'm saying? No matter how hard it was, you live to see another day through that shit. You get you getting through. If you haven't got through it all the way, you getting through it, whether if you, whether uh, you even realize it or not. And um, that was just me speaking to everything that I had overcame. You get what I'm saying? I've overcame plenty of shit, man. And you know, we could just take my career for example. You think I? You think this? You know what I'm saying? Ten year pursuit was just smooth sailing the whole time. We had to overcome. Plenty of shit to, you know what I'm saying, get here and just stay positive and stay chasing this shit and, you know what I'm saying, continue to have faith. And, you know, you look up and you realize you didn't overcame hella shit, you know what I'm saying? You be like, shit, I could take some more. Fuck it. What can I, you know what I'm saying, what can I overcome? That was just me speaking to just in general, man, just in general, the fact that nothing was ever able to stop. Went through plenty, but nothing was ever able to stop you. What stopped us? If it's life, you know what I'm saying, if I got life, you know what I'm saying, I got hope. So obviously you got through these first 10 years. What's that next version of Flex that you're going to have to learn? I feel like I've done it already just on a minor scale. In this long pursuit of trying to get to where I'm going, we done been through the ringer already. So now I'm being placed on this stage, and all I got to do is continue to be me and do it again while everybody looking. So the next version of me is a sharper version, but very much what I always was. You know what I'm saying? Because God gave me everything that I need to be already. I just got to continue stepping. I just got to keep stepping. The person, you know what I'm saying, the flex that you've been on and the one that the the world about to get introduced to, they really not different people at all. The new one just got to be a more responsible version. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm being given more. You know what I'm saying? To whom much is given. But the new version of me is going to be very much what I always been, because that's all I ever need. I just got to be me. You Make know? sure you go ahead, check out Flex Sinatra. Yes, sir. Recently signed to Def Jam. Just and Flawless, let that be known. Flawless Entertainment. Flawless Entertainment, my Def, bad. Def Jam recordings, you feel me? Most definitely. It's a blessing to be here. Show them uh, the chain, bro. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> I probably can't see it because of the mic and shit. That bitch heavy. I'm ready to take this motherfucker off when the camera go off for sure. <laughs> Motherfucker make my neck hurt a little bit. Make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Sad boys for real. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Radio.